Jumbo everyone, I trust you're all keeping well and safe. It is great to know that some parts of the world and airlines are opening up. This indeed is very exciting news for the tourism industry. Karibu sana to our third episode of Safari Frame by Explore Safaris. My name is Myra. In this segment, I'd like to introduce you Robert, who is our head guide at Explore Safaris and has over 15 years experience in this industry. Welcome, Robert. Asante, Maida. It's a pleasure to be here. Jambo, everyone. Karibu sana to Safari Film. As mentioned before, we are here to talk about our destinations. Today, our topic, which we have picked, is Nairobi, which is one of the fastest growing cities in Africa. We'd like to tell you more about this beautiful city that has colorful history, rich with culture and glamour. So Robert, what are you going to tell us about Nairobi? Uh, today we'll first start with the meaning of the word itself, Nairobi, okay. which is a Maasai phrase, mm -hmm. meaning cool waters. And also it was a very important personal Islam for the Maasai. Okay. And the British chose these lands because of the wetland and also accessibility of water. Mm -hmm. and also because of the altitude which is about 1600 meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. Nairobi also evolved from a humble railway camp for railway workers in 1899 to the capital of the British East Africa by 1907. Wow. And uh, there are quite a number of historical sites mm -hmm. in Nairobi which you can tour at least on a city tour. Uhuru Park which was open to the general public by Mze Jomo Kenyatta, our first president in 1969. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. it was the first place where he gave his first speech when we gained our independence. Very nice. And also, Huru Park has got a lot of several national monuments mm -hmm. and also an artificial, artificial lake mm -hmm. for recreational activities. And as we take you around the city, you'll be able to see Nairobi's viewpoint, mm -hmm. parliament buildings, and the first mo president mausoleum, where our president was buried when he passed on in August 19, in August 22nd, 1978. As we tour the city, you still have a lot of buildings, but there is a bit which are going to touch on about the buildings, mm -hmm. like uh, Kenyatta International Conference Center, mm -hmm. which is international acclaimed venue for conferences in Kenya. And its pale teropterata facade mm -hmm. resembles the color of our African arts. Mm -hmm. I'm not forgetting my mm -hmm. It's a central preliminary hall. Mm -hmm. resembles the ancient Roman Senate. Wow. So um, just a few kilometers away from the city, we have two main conservation areas. We'll first touch on Daphne Shedrick, mm -hmm. founded the Elephant Project in uh, 1977 in memory of our late husband, David Shedrick, who was a former former Game Warden at Savo National Park. And to highlight on this park, it's a haven for elephants, numbers and numbers of elephants. David Shedrick has become a home for many orphaned elephants, which are later introduced back into the world. Okay. Coming again to Savo, which is the main park which they are introduced back to. Okay. On the other side, we have Giraffe Center, a creation of the African Fund for Endangered Wildlife and a Kenyan NGO, was founded in 1979 by the late Jack Cressley Melville. It's the home to the Rothschild Giraffe. Mm -hmm. So to tour on the other side of the city, we'll touch on a bit of uh, museums. First of all, we'll start with Karen Brixen Museum. This is where the Danish author, known by her pen name, Isaac Dennison lived in this house from 1917 to 1931. The farm gained a lot of international fame 
with the release of the movie Out of Africa. I hope Moira you watch this movie. Definitely, very interesting one. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start about um, the Nairobi National Park, which was uh, Nairobi National Museum, sorry, which was built in 1929, officially opened on 22nd September mm -hmm. 1930, in honor of Sir Robert Corridon, mm -hmm. who was a one-time Kenyan governor. So the museum has a lot of collection of various specimens which are preserved here from the cradle of mankind to birds. Mm -hmm. And also it has a snake park. Wow. Yeah, this is a topic I know you don't want to listen. <laughs> but still we need the snakes to balance the ecosystem. Very true. <laughs> so last but not the least, mm -hmm. Of Nairobi, Nairobi National Park mm -hmm. is located in this cos cosmopolitan uh, capital, which makes Nairobi the only city in the world with a safari park within its boundaries. It was established in 1946 and it covers uh, approximately 117 square kilometers. Mm -hmm. It is the home of about 50 endangered species and also the home of the big four. Wow. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Asante Samaya. Thank you, Robert. Well, guys, you've heard some interesting facts about our beautiful city from Robert. Uh, we would also like to mention or recommend a few of the places where you can buy local artifacts, such as Kazuri beads, spinner's web, Kitengela glass, and ocean soil, to mention a few. Earlier on, we mentioned that Nairobi is a cosmopolitan city sorry, and offers a visitor a wide array of hotels and restaurants to choose from. We will not mention all, but can recommend a few. For a luxury boutique hotel, we would recommend Hemingway's Nairobi, located in the suburbs of Karen, and it's about approximately 40 minutes drive from the airport. It has 41, 45 sorry, luxury suites, each having its own private balcony overlooking Gong Hills. The hotel also has a spa gym and a swimming pool. It has a main restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch and dinner and a main bar. It also has a vintage wine cellar. For the five star category, we would recommend Villa Rosa Kempinski that is located in the heart of Westlands and is about a 30 to 40 minutes drive from the airport, depending on traffic. The hotel has 200 rooms and suites distributed over 10 floors. It has seven different restaurants that cater for various cuisines to suit your taste buds. It also has a ballroom, spa, and a pool. In the category of a four-star hotel, we would recommend Eka Hotel that is located on Mombasa Road and is approximately about 15 to 20 minutes drive from the airport. It has 167 rooms and suites, a swimming pool, spa and gym. It has two restaurants, bars, two bars and a 24 hour coffee shop. For a three star category, we would recommend the Boma Inn Hotel. This hotel is also situated on Mombasa Road, off Mombasa Road and it's about 20 minutes drive from the airport depending on traffic. It has 58 rooms, one main restaurant and a bar. Uh, as mentioned that Nairobi also has a variety of restaurants that cater for different cuisines. We'll just mention a few for you. For barbecue we would recommend Carnival. For Africans we would, uh, for African cuisine we would recommend Amaika. For the Italian cuisine, we'd recommend Trattoria. For Japanese, Frusato. For Mexican, Mercado. For Arabian, Tamborini. For Indian, we'd recommend Handi, just to name a few. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, tune in next week to learn more about our beautiful destinations on the another episode of Safari Frame. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care and stay safe.